a spaceship called Origin is taking a crew to Thea, a planet five light years away from Earth. Mid-course, Shun wakes up from hypersleep and his pod fills with water, washing him before ejecting him onto the floor. He puts on the clothes he finds waiting for him and goes looking for others, only to hear the alarm go off. He then bumps into Lana and they notice something moving in the shadows. As they look around, they hear the alarm again announcing more people waking up. All the people now awake are passengers, not working crew, and they don't understand why the pods ejected them if they haven't arrived yet. While discussing the situation, Shun thinks about how he ended up here. Back in Tokyo, he used to be part of the Yakuza while his brother Takeshi was a police officer. Takeshi knew that Shun felt trapped in the criminal life and told him about the Thea project so he could escape. Shun agreed to go to a special presentation and put on some glasses that showed him all the benefits of Thea, the only discovered planet so far that could sustain human life. It was still being colonized so they needed more people to work there. Any volunteers would get to start a new life with a clean slate, which made Shun think about all the people he killed for the Yakuza. Shun thought it sounded too perfect and would only go if Takeshi came along. A few days later while Takeshi was in the middle of a dangerous case, he called Shun to confirm he wanted to leave together, but they had to do it that night because the cops were after Shun. Unfortunately the cops learned that Takeshi was telling on them and Shun was shot, but he ran away just in time. Soon Takeshi found him and helped him get to his apartment, but the Yakuza were waiting there and killed Takeshi on the spot for being a cop. Some days later, the gang boss beat Shun up for befriending a cop. When he went home, Shun almost self-deleted, but a picture of his brother stopped him. Instead he found his boss's father and shot him on the phone for his boss to hear. Soon the boss found them and Shun got ready to shoot the father, but he couldn't do it. Luckily the guard the boss brought was a friend of Shun's and shot the boss so they could finally be free. Back to the present, the group starts searching the ship to find answers and make it to a very windy room. Lana, Shun, and one more guy volunteer to take the stairs and go to the upper floor to investigate, but they still can't find anyone and start climbing to the next floor. On the main deck, Bong finds a button and presses it while ignoring half the group's protests. Another alarm wails and the steps start disappearing, so the trio has to hurry up. Shun and Lana make it safely to the next floor but the third guy falls to his death. While everyone freaks out, an elevator opens and Bong convinces them to get going. Meanwhile Shun and Lana explore the next floor and find some bloodstains. They enter the control room and find some abandoned food yet still no crew. Soon the others join them and Lee touches a screen that activates the lights. Then Katie finds a small radio and manages to get in contact with a crew member, who begs for help as he says he's in cell 50 in the lowest ring. The man suddenly screams and the transmission ends. Sean, Lana, Abigail, and Henri volunteer to go looking for him. While they take the elevator, Lee continues to handle the screens and gets access to the ship computer. She discovers that the other passengers and crew members had evacuated the spaceship an hour before the group woke up because the ship was hit by an asteroid. Back to Shun's team, they make it to the lower floors and find pools with animals in them. Suddenly a drop of blood falls on Abigail and she looks up to see a body with a gun next to her. Her tag says her name is Evelyn and she's a crew member. At that moment they hear a cry for help from behind a door, so Lana and Shun take the gun and go investigate. As soon as they disappear into the dark corridor, Evelyn wakes up and says nobody should go behind that door. In the dark chamber, there's an awful smell and a gooey substance. Looking around reveals a bunch of bodies and the asteroid that hit the ship. Suddenly Shun is startled by a man and he defends himself, dropping him to the floor. The guy warns them to get out before his body starts twisting in all kinds of disturbing angles, saying the word inside before his eyes explode and he dies. At that moment they hear another cry for help and find Max, who is heavily wounded and also has a gun. At the same time, Evelyn tells Henri and Abigail that Max can't be trusted because an alien came with the asteroid and it can get inside people. When Lana and Shun show up with Max, Henri immediately warns them and Max tries to escape. Shun quickly hits him a few times to lock him up in the decontamination unit. Afterward Evelyn explains that after the asteroid hit, the passengers started dying. Max attacked her and told her that he had something in his head, so he requested to be locked up. Evelyn asks to see Max and they take her to him, causing Max to say she's lying and she was the one that attacked first. Abigail and Max ignore him and take Evelyn away for treatment, but Lana isn't sure who they should trust. She checks both guns and confirms Evelyn shot first, so Max explains he shot back in self-defense. Lana convinces Shun to release Max and take him to the infirmary too. Then a flashback shows that Lana used to be a bodyguard for a senator's daughter. She grew close to the family and became fond of them, which got her a warning from the other bodyguard. However Lana and the senator ended up kissing anyway. This distraction allowed some criminals to sneak inside the house and shoot the senator before she brought them all down. Her partner soon took the senator away while Lana went looking for the girl, but when she reached the bed, there were only pillows. Suddenly a criminal attacked Lana and kept throwing her against the furniture until she reached her gun and killed the guy. Some of her bullets went through the closet and when she opened it, she was devastated to find the girl dead inside. In the present, Lee discovers that the comm systems that link the ship to Thea have been destroyed. Logan starts freaking out and decides to leave the room. As he wanders around, 
He keeps hearing voices, only to suddenly be startled by Katie and Venetia. Logan ignores their concern and enters the next room, where they find a gym. After getting some water, the women turn around and notice Logan has disappeared. Katie and Venetia go looking for him and make it to the crew's quarters, where they hear a noise. However it's just Bomb, who found a crew tag and is now using the shower. When they turn on a computer, they find a worker's video log. The guy is happily sharing his experience when suddenly the screen is filled with a static and an alarm calls the crew to the control room before the video goes black. The group keeps going and finds Logan at the same time he finds Henri and Abigail, who rush an unconscious Evelyn to the infirmary. Henri has medical knowledge and with Abigail's help he starts treating her. The others wait outside but Logan gets nervous and leaves. Katie follows him and finds him looking for medicine right before he falls on the floor as he has a seizure. She helps him go through it until he falls unconscious. When Logan wakes up, he asks Katie to keep the secret. Meanwhile Lee discovers they're nine days from Thea and the ship is still on course, so the automatic landing system should save them. At that moment Lee's nose starts bleeding and Eric checks on her, but she avoids his questions. In the elevator, Sean realizes Max can't even tell he's bleeding. Getting suspicious, he sees the medic tag and asks about procedures, causing Max to answer by hitting him and taking his gun. Lana keeps him at gunpoint and demands answers, so Max reads the tag to say he's a human medic. Lana freezes because of her PTSD and Max tries shooting Sean but the safety is on, so Sean uses the chance to beat him up and take the gun back to shoot him dead. Worried, the duo runs back to the disaster zone and discovers there's a body missing. They follow a trail of goo and find the elevator going up, so they'll have to search every level. Shun gets nervous and points his gun at Lana, wondering if he can trust her. Lana immediately disarms him and points out they should ask Evelyn for help. In the infirmary, Evelyn is unconscious but stable. She remembers the day she told her family about the space trip, her father had been proud, but her sister got angry because she was leaving her alone to take care of their dying dad. During the trip, Evelyn noticed Henri had been twitching in his pod and Max helped her fix the oxygen levels. When it was time for the crew to go to sleep too, Evelyn's pod malfunctioned and the bright beam of the ship entering speedlight reached her face, causing her to see many visions of her past and future. She woke up and left her pod, finding the room empty. Then she searched the area and found many of the passengers bleeding, only to wake up for real. It turned out the light had hurt Evelyn's eyes and Max was treating her. They started spending time together and grew close. Eventually Max removed the bandages and Evelyn's eyes were healed, so they shared a kiss. The next time the crew went to sleep, Evelyn had visions of a violent future for the passengers. The crew was awakened by a sudden alarm when asteroids begun flying toward the ship. Most were caught by the shield but one managed to hit them anyway. The computer showed that passengers were dying in cell 50, so Max took a gun and went down to check with a co-worker. Behind the door 50, they could hear screaming. Minutes later, Max contacted Evelyn on the radio and begged for help before the transmission was cut off. Evelyn ran to warn the captain, who announced they were evacuating because an alien was aboard, so she considered those in cell 50 dead. Evelyn ignored her orders and went looking for Max instead of evacuating the passengers under her care, explaining why Sean and the others didn't leave. When she made it to cell 50, Max warned her that he was already possessed before attacking her, so Evelyn shot him to defend herself. In the present, the fire alarm starts wailing and Henri goes to investigate, finding the emergency button broken but nobody around. He bumps into Sean and Lana, who run back with him. In the infirmary, Abigail is watching over Evelyn, who is lacking oxygen. Abigail grabs a scalpel for protection and runs out to grab an oxygen tank, but when she comes back she's knocked out by someone hitting her with the door. It's Eric, who proceeds to choke Evelyn because she saw him back during the first attack and knows he's infected. At that moment the others arrive and Eric gets distracted, so Evelyn grabs a scalpel and stabs him. Eric runs away before the others can catch him. In the meantime Logan goes to the bathroom only to be knocked down by Eric, who has an alien coming out of his eye. Logan yells for help and Katie comes over, screaming to distract Eric so Logan can push him off. Eric runs to the elevator as Sean arrives and shoots him right before the door closes. Sean and Henri follow the blood trail and take the elevator too. When they find Max's body, they see a little tentacle coming out of his eyes. Henri touches it and the alien immediately hides, so they decide to take the body to the control room for research. Among the medical tools, Henri finds a laser, which he tests by cutting Max's fingertip off. This makes Henri remember the day he was introduced to some secret government labs. The leader said they wanted to use Henri's DNA knowledge to trigger diseases instead of curing them, intending to kill a political oppressor to save lives. Henri worked hard but reached no results, so the leader asked for another scientist's help. The competition inspired Henri to work more and he found the right DNA for the mission, which successfully killed the politician in South Africa. Seeing his family on TV made him feel guilty about it. In the present, Henri starts cutting the top of Max's head and they find the alien attached to Max's brain, but it's decomposing. The alien is bug-like and can reproduce by entering a host, controlling their behavior. Then Lana and Sean go looking for Eric, who is back in cell 50 and has found a radio. 
He calls Venetia in the infirmary and begs for help, saying he has chunks of memory missing and doesn't know what he did. Soon Lana and Shun make it to the morgue, where they find the radio with a body. At that moment Eric locks the door behind them and makes the cold in the room worse to slowly kill them. Henri and Abigail take Max to the infirmary and find Evelyn but no Venetia. At that moment Lana contacts them for help while Shun begins hitting the cold air vent with a piece of metal. Since it's not working, he decides to use his fingers to pull the lid off, getting hurt in the process. Then he tries to hit the machine with the metal, only to get shocked and fall. Lana decides to try again and manages to make the cold stop just in time. Meanwhile Venetia meets with Eric, who apologizes as he collapses. When Venetia comes closer, Eric confirms he's been acting and attacks her. Hearing her screams, Henri and Abigail decide to split. Abigail makes it to the morgue and helps Lana carry Shun away. When Eric is about to infect Venetia, Henri tackles him and the men start to fight. Venetia tries to escape so Eric jumps on her instead, thus Henri jumps on him too and the fight continues. Then Venetia stabs Eric with the scalpel and Henri steps back to lock the door. Eric threatens to kill Venetia if Henri doesn't open the door, but Henri apologizes and opens the airlock instead, causing Venice and Eric to be ejected into space. Sometime later, Lee unlocks the crew's quarters so they can go to sleep. Before choosing a room, Logan kisses Katie. The guilt won't let Henri sleep so he goes to the airlock, only to discover blood indicating someone escaped through the ceiling hatch. A sleeping Lee finds a strange bug walking on her body, only to wake up and realize it was a nightmare. She leaves the room and finds water on the floor, which she follows until she finds Eric's body in the pool. Soon Henri arrives and checks the blood, noticing there's no goo in it. This means the alien is on the loose. Another flashback shows that Lee used to be a hacker. She worked for a gang leader, who one day fired her to replace her with AI. The meeting was done when she took off her glasses, revealing it was all online because Lee is unable to touch people. Getting desperate, Lee hired an AI companion and took her to an abandoned game, where she removed her morality filters. Then Lee gave her a program she made, hoping the AI would help her bring down other AI so she wouldn't lose her job. This gave the AI tons of new knowledge. They spent a lot of time together in the virtual world and they even gave the AI a hologram so she could learn to touch people. One night they went to a virtual bar and saw Lee's former boss, so the AI made a plan. She approached the guy and gave him a drink with Lee's hacking program in it, activating it by kissing his neck. The boss realized this AI wasn't one of his and grabbed her, so Lee screamed at the same time the AI broke a glass on the guy's head. A bunch of guards appeared so Lee had to log out. She waited a few hours before logging back into the bar and when she tried to approach the AI, the guards surrounded her. Lee escaped by transferring herself to the abandoned video game, where her AI found her. She warned Lee that the gang was after her, so Lee's only chance to escape was to join the Thea project. Then the AI kissed her to transfer the information she had about it before disappearing. Afterward Lee downloaded everything in a chip and got surgery to hide it under her skin. In the present, Lee forces herself to ignore her fears and helps Henri take the body to the infirmary. He cuts the top of the head off and confirms that the alien is gone. Then Henri takes the brain out and cuts it in two, discovering that the alien corrupts the memory. Getting an idea, Lee runs out of the room and bumps into the others, who notice the blood on her shirt. Soon the group makes it to the infirmary and they realize the alien must be infecting one of them. Meanwhile Lee runs to the control room and grabs a suitcase to access the chip hidden in her wrist. However the computer can't access the data, so Lee rips out some wires to create a shock in the chip, regardless of the pain. Now she tries again and accesses the chip's database with everyone's profiles. In the meantime, Shun goes to his room and discovers someone stole his gun. At the gym, a panicking Logan is breaking things and ignoring Katie's attempts to calm him down. Bomb then announces he thinks Lee is the infected one because she found Eric. They go looking for her and find her watching Logan's interview. Lee tries to escape, but Logan grabs her and causes her to drop the suitcase. A fight ensues and the guys easily overpower her, knocking her out as she falls. When she wakes up, her hands are tied and Baum is interrogating her. She spits at his face and Baum takes out Shun's gun, but Logan immediately disarms him thinking this is going too far. At that moment the others show up so Baum pushes Logan to take the gun back, but it falls and fires, hurting Shun's arm. Now Lana is in control and she kicks Logan and Baum out of the room. Shun follows them and makes them enter the elevator, where he gives them a warning shot and threatens to kill them if they ever show up again. Suddenly an explosion happens in the infirmary and the system quickly puts out the fire, but it's too late, the scanner is destroyed and now they can't scan everyone's brains to find the alien. A few days later, Logan and Balm are out of food and water so they go looking for supplies in unexplored floors. They find the body of the guy that fell and the guilt makes Balm run away. In another room, he's pleased to discover a life raft full of food. After grabbing some supplies, he comes out and sees Katie secretly bringing food and medicine to Logan. Then a flashback shows Balm at an auction for one of Earth's last plants. He met Margot and they quickly hit it off. They started dating and Baum discovered she was the owner of a very valuable necklace, which she kept in a nanobot safe activated by her voice. 
Margot steps on Casper realized Baum was using Margot to steal the necklace and explained she took it from his dead dad, so he wanted to help Baum reclaim what was his. Baum continued dating Margot while secretly recording everything she said to put together the password. At the same time he started an affair with Casper, who wanted to have a new life with Baum after stealing the necklace. Eventually Baum recorded all the words and Casper left the door unlocked for him so he could finally steal the necklace, which he immediately took to a shop. However the necklace turned out to be a fake. Moments later the police captured him and sent him to jail. Margot visited and explained her husband lost the real necklace to gambling, so she wanted to at least get the insurance money by making someone steal it. She promised to get a short sentence for Baum if he didn't tell the police about the fake, but he refused to cooperate and she left. Casper also visited and explained he wasn't working with her, Margot accidentally saw them together and found out the truth. Yet he refused to help Baum because he needed the money since he was a gambler like his father. Still in love, Baum agreed to keep his mouth shut. In the present, Baum waits for Katie to leave and brings Logan to the life raft. Logan will try to bypass the system so they can separate it from the main ship. Meanwhile Lana and Evelyn open the baggage room so everyone can retrieve their personal items. Logan doesn't have one because he didn't own anything back on Earth and Katie kisses him to comfort him. His feelings for her cause him to show her the life raft, and they're found by Baum. Logan confronts him and says Katie is coming with them, ignoring his protest. Later in private, Katie reveals she found a crew member's tag but also admits she doesn't trust Baum, so Logan agrees to leave only with her. They use the tag to activate the raft but before they leave, Katie goes to fetch more medicine. This is seen by Lee, who gets suspicious. Meanwhile Baum confronts Logan because he heard everything and starts the emergency launch before stepping out of the pod. Logan immediately follows him out and they watch the raft fly away. Then Logan punches Baum, who retaliates by choking him and leaving him on the ground. Minutes later Katie finds him but Logan is angry and kicks her out. Later Lee finds Logan and threatens him with a laser to make him confess when he had his first seizure. It matches what she saw on the file, meaning his memory is fine and he's clean. Lee convinces him to work together and they hide in a room where Logan helps her repair her suitcase. Suddenly the ship rumbles and the group checks the computer to discover they're losing pressure in cell 50. They'll have to patch the hole to prevent it from getting worse. Sean, Evelyn, Lana, and Henri gather some tools and on their way to the cell they bump into Logan, who comes along to help. In cell 50, they start sealing the edges between the asteroid and the ship, only for Evelyn to suddenly announce they must run. A hole opens in the wall and the group has to hold on to avoid getting blown out. Unfortunately Logan is hit by a box and crushed against the asteroid. Then the box gets stuck in the hole, completely covering it. Sean and Lana rush to get Logan's body but the box soon breaks and the blowing starts again. Luckily everyone manages to hold on and make it to the door, closing it right before the asteroid disintegrates. In the control room Lee discovers the system is activating the defenses and contacts Sean's group to warn them the ship is about to disconnect the ring they're in. Everyone crosses the door before it closes, but Lana trips and is left behind. Shun asks Lee to open the door, but the system doesn't let her. While Henri and Evelyn take Logan away with Baum, Shun tells Lana her only choice is to find a spacesuit and jump out of the ring through the asteroid hole. Meanwhile the group takes Logan to the infirmary. He needs a transfusion, but they don't know his blood type and giving him the wrong one could kill him. Henri is O positive, known as the most common type. Logan is dying anyway so Henri thinks they should take the risk. At that moment Lee finishes fixing her suitcase and checks the profiles just in time to tell the others that Logan is a negative. Baum has it and they immediately start the transfusion. Back to Lana, she finds the suit and enters cell 50, concentrating on Shun's voice to deal with her fear. He asks about her past so she shares a story about her brother as a distraction. She carefully leaves through the hole and holds onto the side of the ship while Shun opens the airlock, which causes him pain. When the ring finally is ejected, Lana makes the jump and lands on Shun, closing the door before the cold could kill him. Moments later, Logan wakes up alone and sees a wounded Lee above him. She bleeds all over him and says it's inside before dying. Logan immediately moves away and is found by Katie. Another flashback shows that Logan used to do community service in a retirement home as part of a deal with the law. One of the old ladies smelled Mary Jane on him and convinced him to share while admitting she couldn't wait for her euthanasia to be approved. On her birthday, Logan took the lady out on a ride so she could have a last fun day before her incoming death. This little trip convinced her to wait a big longer before signing the euthanasia papers. However the next day Logan discovered she lied to end the day on a bright note and before leaving for her death, she left behind her Thea ticket for him. In the present, Katie triggers the alarm and the group comes to the infirmary. Logan tells them what happened and they agree to open Lee up. Henri goes through the procedure and is furious to discover there's no alien or damage in the brain. There's an entry wound though, meaning she was stabbed. Sean and Lana point their guns at Logan, who tells them about Lee's project to access the files and compare memories to reveal the alien. The group agrees they need to find Lee's chip to continue her work, causing Baum to suddenly run away and lock the group in the infirmary. While Baum searches Lee's room, the group breaks the infirmary window. Then Lana, Sean, and Henri go after Baum. 
When Sean and Lana enter Lee's room, Bomb surprises Henri, taking him hostage. Bomb swears he isn't infected and once the duo puts the guns down, he lets go of Henri and runs into a bedroom, getting a shot in his stomach before the door closes. The trio waits outside and hears him scream as he removes the bullet. At that moment, Henri notices blood on another door and he goes inside to find the scalpel that killed Lee, meaning it wasn't Bomb. In the infirmary, Logan grabs Lee's hand and sees the wound, realizing that she said it's inside to mean the chip. He and Katie start cutting Lee's wrist and retrieve the chip. Then they make their way to the suitcase, but Logan is too weak to keep going and tells Katie where to find it. She rushes to find the profiles and looks at her own, but the video doesn't show much because Katie had a breakdown during the interview and didn't answer the questions. Furious, Katie starts destroying the chip when she's found by Lana and Sean, who think she's the alien because the scalpel was in her room. Katie swears it isn't true and opens a pod to drop water on Sean before running away. Lana quickly catches up to her and after some struggle, she knocks her out. A new flashback shows Katie traveling to meet with her brother Andy, who wasn't happy to see her after so many years. She wanted to spend time together, but Andy kept avoiding her. Instead Katie started to help the locals and met Sean, who was kind to her. However Andy asked her to stay away from him. Katie agreed while hiding a chip inserted in her neck. Eventually Andy let her come to his sermons, during which he talked about a life without technology. The moment was interrupted by a drone, which scanned Katie's chip before flying away. Now the locals didn't want anything to do with her except for Sean, who was happy to have another misfit in town and took her horse riding. Katie went too fast and fell. When she woke up, she was home and Andy informed her he kicked Sean out. An argument ensued and it was revealed that when Katie was a teen, she burned down the trailer of the kid that harassed Andy to kill him. Andy didn't forgive her and Katie had to leave. When Katie wakes up, her hands are tied and she's been locked up. The group discusses what to do with her and agrees to let the authorities on Thea deal with this since they only have one day left. Suddenly the ship starts rumbling and the group discovers the shields are closing, only to then notice they can finally see Thea. To their shock, a probe flies out of the planet and connects to the ship. The group rushes to check on it but it's empty. Suddenly the probe glows and takes control of the ship's system. It detects a non-native life form so it activates a special protocol as all the ship rings start glowing too. In the cell, Katie is having a panic attack as flashbacks keep haunting her. Sean and Lana go to check the corridors and notice gas being released in the last circle, so Henri uses an axe to break the wall and discovers poison tanks. The gas is being used to kill everyone aboard and it will soon reach the other circles. Bomb thinks they need to kill Katie to save themselves and while everyone argues, Logan goes to the cell and breaks the glass to free her. Meanwhile Lana refuses to kill again, so Sean makes her give her gun to Bomb and the men go searching for Katie to kill her. A chase ensues and soon the guys find Kate, who finally admits she destroyed the chip because she didn't want Logan to discover her past. Shun puts his gun down, saying they've already been wrong before. At that moment they get a message on the radio saying Henri has an idea. The group reunites and Henri explains he could use saline to lower body temperature enough to mimic death. If the host dies, the parasite should too. Henri admits he may fail to bring her back, but Katie volunteers to do it anyway. The test begins and Katie starts flatlining, but soon they hear the ship computer release more poison in another circle, meaning the alien isn't dead yet. Henri starts working on bringing her back and it takes too long, so they think she's dead. Thankfully Katie wakes up in the end. Minutes later, the group argues over what to do so Evelyn and Abigail start searching the captain's room. They find a hologram showing Thea's solar system with a planet called Iris, which never appeared on maps before. There's also a confidential file called the Iris Incident and they learn that the company tried sending a ship there first, but the mission failed because of aggressive aliens. Evelyn plays some footage and they watch a woman die as her body twists, meaning it's the same alien and that's why the ship already has the poison ready for emergencies. Sean, Henri, and Lana start looking for oxygen tanks. Logan warns them the poison is about to reach them so they run with as many tanks as possible, leaving the room right before the poison hits. Sadly Henri still breathes a bit of it, so he's rather weak. Bomb goes to the probe to attack it with an axe but he does no damage. The poison will soon reach him too and Katie wants to help him because he saved Logan with his blood. When she finds him, they argue until they see on the screen that the probe will go back to Thea soon. This could be their escape, but it has a weight limit. Meanwhile Sean and Lana go looking for medicine for Henri and Sean notices something in Max's body. He tells Lana to go then takes a picture of the Max and his brother that Evelyn left there earlier. On the back it says Max and Sam, which makes Sean suspicious. While Katie and Bomb tells the others about the probe, Shun goes to Lana's room and discovers she had been watching the crew's video logs to obtain information and cover her memory gaps. After giving Henri the medicine, Lana goes looking for Shun and catches him red-handed. A flashback then reveals that Lana had been in the pool and Eric used the chance to attack her, passing the alien to her. She learned to act human thanks to the videos and started to keep recorded notes in case she had to jump bodies again. However Lana's memories keep haunting the alien inside and bonding with Shun taught her about how humans handle grief and survival. 
it had been her who destroyed the scanner, and when Shun asked her to share about herself, she told him a story about a brother called Sam she got from the video. That was Max's brother, which is why the name on the picture gave away her lie. Lane overheard Lee talking to an unconscious Logan and when Lee noticed she didn't have her gun, she got suspicious so Lana killed her with the scalpel, which she later dropped in Katie's room. This triggered Lana's memories full of guilt, which made her have a breakdown even as an alien. In the present, Shun attacks Lana and a fight ensues. After lots of struggle, Lana pushes Shun off and runs away. Shun immediately chases after her and the fight starts again near the elevator. Lana makes Shun stop by pointing her gun at him and Shun calls her a monster, which makes Lana remember the child's death. Agreeing she's a monster, she gives the gun to Shun, who knocks her out instead of killing her. At that moment Abigail announces over the speakers that none of them can choose who to leave behind, so they'll stay and let Lana and Shun have the probe. While the group gathers the oxygen masks hoping to survive, Shun picks Lana up and takes her to the probe, then he ejects it with her inside. The computer immediately cancels the protocol and announces they'll be landing on Thea soon. The whole group starts celebrating except for Henri, who suddenly pukes and collapses. In the probe, Lana receives a message from Thea saying nobody should come closer because the planet isn't safe. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.